What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to do something a little interesting um, in the season two for Diablo 4, and that is just Varshan farming, okay? And not only Varshan farming, but in particular, Tree of Whisper Turdins, because I believe that this is gonna be the most efficient way to farm all of our Varshan parts here, okay? So a lot of people have been asking me now with all the changes to Living Steel and Helltides and how easy it is to accumulate Living Steel in just one hour of farming one Helltide. I mean, you can get upwards of 40, 50, you know, Living Steels in one go for an hour. So um, with all of that done, I really wanted to take the test because now we're kind of in an imbalance here. And I just wanted to see how many Varshan parts I can farm in one hour with a particular strategy. So we got about five minutes here um, and when I'm going to start because like this dungeon is going to reset and we're just going to get a really fresh clock on all of our Tree of Whisper quests and stuff. So I kind of wanted to go over a few points in my strategies. Okay, so Tree of Whispers is probably by far the best way to accumulate Varshan parts. The reason being is because when you turn in a Tree of Whispers quest or the all 10 grim favors you can get multiple of all of these okay now the hardest one that does come into account is which is what most people have been talking about is the malignant heart because it is a little bit harder drop and you don't get it as much as these other ones another big thing is is when you come over here to the occultist you're able to kind of interchange the first three so the hand the head and the femur where you can't do that or excuse me no it's the um uh, it's the the pot lady where you can interchange the first three, but you cannot get the malignant heart. You can actually use the malignant heart to get the other ones, which is a bit odd seeing how that the malignant heart is the rarer drop out of the three. So if you come over here to the resources and you do the summoning items, you can see that I can spend a malignant heart to guarantee one of these. Or what you can do is do one of the transmutes on any of these three, which will spend one of the first three items and give you a chance to get any of them, right? But it only gives you a chance to get the first three and does not give you a chance to get the malignant heart, which is the hardest one to get. So while we're waiting for this, cause we got about two minutes until this, uh, the whisper stuff kind of resets or some of it resets, cause some of it still expires for not 32 minutes. So some of this is gonna change. So I just want a fresh reset. So I'm gonna kind of go over my strategies right now and just see now when you do do a turn in for the tree of whispers you can get upwards of one to three items i think on the average you get two um and sometimes you can just get one but i think most of the time the average is about two of those items which is completely random out of the four that drop okay so uh first things first i think the most the fastest and most efficient way is to just do the normal dungeons because these give five grim favors you do two of them right you do two or two of them and then you have ten Grim favors, it's an easy turn in, okay? Now, I do want to keep in mind that when you're doing all of these, just like in Vamp Tides, that once you do them, they're done, and you have to wait for them to reset. So you only have a certain amount you can do for, like, quote-unquote, the hour. So, like, my first strategy would definitely do normal dungeons. Vamp Tides are very, very huge, okay? Because this is in totality. This is going to be 11 total. Um, uh, sometimes you can get all three of these to spawn on top of like a, a group cluster here, which can give you even more. Now, I do also want to keep in mind that when you are doing dungeons like in like a Helltide or something, it still counts towards Grim Favors. Um, so it's probably normal dungeons first into a Vamp Tide because you have an hour to do that. After that, a real really good check is to do the pvp zone for the seething uh, abomination because that is five grim favors the issue with this one is is when you go in he's not always there so you kind of got to wait for him to spawn so as far as time per hour you may want to do this one last just because of the time constraint um after that you do have legions which do give three but these are only up every you know few hours so i wouldn't kind of count this as far as being efficient but if it is there definitely go do it um the next thing after that is what I would suggest to do is to do clusters. So you see like this small little cluster of um, the lesser Grim Favors where one gives you three and the other two give you one, which is a total of five, which is nice. But if you have to go like from here and then I got to run up here, then run over here, just to do them, it is going to slow you down significantly. So if you have a bunch of clusters here where you can kind of just like combine them as you're killing the monsters to do these turn-ins, that's really, really good. Another really good cluster is right here, which is very nice. 
I definitely wouldn't suggest doing the ones in the PvP zone. I would just look for the Seething uh, Abomination. But after that, you are good to go. So we have our fastest character here. So when you do do this strategy, I definitely would suggest doing whichever character is your fastest. Um, Sork is mine because I have outstanding speed with ghost walkers on my amulet and boots as well as having teleport so I can just get through dungeons incredibly fast because my boots have uh, four evade charges and when you combine that with metamorphose you are absolutely flying. So it is 830 we are one minute behind the ball so we are going to go test this now and just get it popping. So we got three minutes on this this is three free grim favors so it kind of sucks that we got to kind of got to wait for that. Um, so I may just skip that one because I don't want to slow down because we're already a minute behind. So we're just going to go ahead and go knock this dungeon out and just get uh, blasting. Actually, you see the dungeon down here actually reset. So it's gone. I actually do not have access to that dungeon anymore. So we are just going to go fly and go do this. Um, but while we're going through this dungeon, guys, I do want to talk about a few other strategies. I am doing this completely solo. And my chat actually helped me just decide to do this solo instead of a group because I just want it to be like if you are a solo player, just what like the baseline is for farming these. Because if, it, if you are in a group, you can go much faster. Joe, what's up, baby? Welcome back. Happy Thanksgiving. So if you're in a group, you're able to split a dungeon. OK, you're able to split a dungeon. And you can go a lot faster. OK, especially on stuff where it's like, you know, hey, go put this pedestal here. Go grab two pedestals and you're just splitting through. So the objective of this is all I want to do is just fly through here and just complete whatever the mission is. The objective is, which is what you see here. We just want to kill these guys. I got the key and I just want to blast away. I don't care about doing anything else because these are normal dungeons. So level 100 monsters like these things are not going to hurt me. Um, if anything, they're just in the way. So we are just trying to blast. I think this is travel to the upper hand. So we're just trying to go through this as fast as we can. Um, we don't care about picking up any gear, nothing like that. We just want to do this for straight efficiency per hour. Okay. Um, so when it comes to a group, what you can do is, as you can see, like collecting animus here. If I was in a group, I would be able to split the dungeon here and we would be able to collect this much faster. Okay. So you are going to save some time when you do that, um, which makes it makes you going a little bit faster. So when we get to the end times here. We're just going to talk about like, hey, if you were in a group, you're just going to shave off X time. Now, one other big tip, and we had already tried this, is splitting dungeons completely. Meaning like, I'm doing this dungeon, and then I have somebody in my party off in the world doing a different dungeon, right? Now, although you can do that, and when you're doing for the, um, what is it, the, what's this stuff called? When you're doing your Renown... Completing dungeons like that works, but it does not work for Tree of Whisper turn-ins. You actually have to be present in the dungeon. So the only other strategy that you can do with that is having somebody split the dungeon, get to the end, and you teleport to them. You guys finish off the boss or the end game mission, whatever it is, like a kill-all, and then that person will get full credit, and then you can alternate vice versa. So we are just going to blast through this and just have a good time, so I will see you guys at the end. All right, guys, we are at the end of the hour. Exactly. We are going to do um, to go turn in our ninth Tree of Whispers turn in. So we were um, able to get nine turn ins during this hour. So before we get into the full math and I showcase my results here, I do want to add another brief tip. When you are doing this turn in, you are always going to be looking for chaos or a greater if you get that you're always going to take that that's going to give you much better odds and give you a lot more gold so i'm going to take chaos here for our ninth turn in we are going to just see how much we gold we got typically on chaos you get eight million so we're going to see i actually got i went from 103 to 115 so i got what 12 million that time which is kind of nuts so guys it is time to report our results okay so in the hour, what we ended up doing, world boss coming in, we completed every single dungeon. We just got another dungeon reset here. We completed every dungeon that we could. We completed two iterations of Hell Tides. We were able to farm all the PvP variants, the bosses in particular. And then we did a bunch of like, you know, three Grim Favors, like harvest the, the moats or like kill something and just be able to get three Grim Favors very, very quickly. So in our results, I do want to mention that during all of this in the dungeons, we were able to get the four bonuses. Is we got four bonus monsters, 
which are when that little portal comes up on the ground here and then one monster spawns we were able to kill that so before we get into so we got four of those nine grim um tree of whisper turn-ins and we're going to showcase the results but first in one hour we went from 63 million gold to 153 million gold or 115 million so we got a we got 52 million in those nine turn-ins which is actually not bad at all that 50 million gold in one hour obviously you could do this much much faster so let's get let's go ahead and sell let's go um and then we can talk about our results so we got 50 million in gold which was awesome because i also wanted to do this test because i was low on gold i was actually down to my last 53 million and i was just absolutely broke so here are our final results for our tree of whispers um varshan runs in one hour so we were able to accumulate five malignant hearts five trembling hands six gurgling heads and three blackened fembers so what does this mean so in this we were actually only able to do three runs at the most we could do four because what we can do is we can go to the the pot lady wherever she is the pot lady let's go over here to kova shots so at the most we could do four varshan runs with um our particular uh, results here and, and from all the items that we got the main reason that we're able to do four is because we're able to change out some of these items so you come over here to the alchemist and then you come up into our refined resources under the summoning items and we can interchange this right so you can use like the extra gurgling head and we can just pop this right i'll showcase it now so we'll run a gurgling head we'll come out here so we spent one gurgling head so now we're down to five instead of six we're going to open this and we got another black and femur right there so now we're able to do four full runs of varshan so what does this mean for the balance if you will in comparison to the hell tides with the living steel so if my math is correct on average except for this particular this is actually really good for the video so this particular zone has three um grigor chests or living steel chests which equates to 15 living steels at a minimum which is only three runs for grigor which is effectively one durial run okay now if it's not this zone any other zone that spawns for hell ties is only two chests which is only 10 living steel and then it's only one durial run or two grigor runs so based on my results here this is four varshan runs which is going to give us four of the eggs which is two durial runs so th now these are these are like averages and roughly skewed numbers guys because on average i think a normal person can farm more than just the 10 or 15 living steels and then you could probably farm like this or more if you're like very very fast i think i'm a pretty fast player and we kind of went through so before we get into like my final thoughts on this i do want to mention another tip so what you can do is as an example when you do complete a chest or a chest or a dungeon or anything like that, you can just like with the living steels, when you open up a living steel chest, then you switch characters and that same chest is available to be open. Again, these same dungeons and everything is able to be done with a alternate character. However, just any um, grim favors that you have already accumulated do not carry over. Those are separate. So you can, in fact, just swap characters and just speed it up, meaning like, what I would suggest is if you had another character, you just farm normal dungeons as much as humanly possible because they give the most grim favors. Okay, so with that strategy out of the way, we got four Gar uh, Varshan runs, which is two Durial runs, which is actually really, really nice. And this is equivalent to doing... This is, a, this is actually slightly better than farming Living Seals because only on average you can get two to three uh grigor runs which is effectively one durial run so in one hour we farmed 50 million gold and we were able to accumulate four varshan runs this is actually really really good i'm actually very surprised in our results i honestly thought with the changes to living steel that i wasn't going to be able to farm enough varshan parts to kind of make make it balanced right because with the changes to living steel it really seemed like it was just heavily imbalanced and you just got so much more living steels. Now, I will tell you, on the high end, I was able to accumulate 40 plus living steels in one 
uh, Helltide run, which obviously when you compare the hour, that is much more than these current results. However, I did not do this test by switching characters. So I don't know if that's on the super, super high, like sweaty gamer, like I'm smashing my keyboard runs. I still think you might get more Living Steel, which would give you more Grigor runs. But, I mean, this is really good results, guys. Just for one hour, I was doing it completely solo, so not in a team and not doing it as fast as I possibly could. So that way, for people who aren't even playing with a group and they are like SSF or they're just doing this solo and they don't have anybody to play with, these are actually really, really good results. So, um,. Yeah, guys, I think it's actually pretty balanced. I think it's pretty balanced. I think if on the super sweaty high end, if you're switching characters multiple times um, for Living Steels and then you're switching characters multiple times for this, it's probably pretty close. Um, but I think you might get just slightly more Living Steels than you can all of these pieces. But I really am surprised with these results and I really do like it. So like the video, guys. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this um, kind of strategy and just farming varshan parts again i really thought it was going to be super imbalanced but i think it's pretty pretty good so blizzard if you do see this shout out to you guys it seems okay um we, we are going to do some further testing as far as like swapping characters and doing you know longer sessions instead of just one hour but i wanted to kind of make it equivalent to a health hide hour so again guys let everybody let me know down in the comments what, you, what everybody thinks and don't forget to subscribe and as always stay gaming and happy thanksgiving i hope you guys bellies are full and you got in a really good nap so Catch you later. Peace.